well, like, now in the past I've made videos talking about the EIS, which is the largest teaching union in Scotland, and their anti-racist educational resources. You know, from time to time I come back onto this website just to see if they've eh, had any updates, and there's been a couple of things that they've updated recently, but not really anything to write home about in terms of hyperlinks, etc. But, you know, the gist of the things that I have touched upon in the past, if you scroll through it, addressing inclusion, effectively challenging racism in schools, celebrating difference, exploiting stereotypes and anti-racism, the anti-racist educator, which we'll come on to yet again, the black curriculum, talking about race, Black Lives Matter at school, A. Adams Bairns, exploring equality and diversity in Scotland, past and present, colourful heritage, primary school resource parks, Insight Report, how do BAMES, young BAMES in Scotland perceive and experience secondary school education? You know, it's just relentless and if you um, you come up and we go, I mean they've got a lot, they've got gender equality of course, disability equality, they've got, uh, there was a page relating to the LGB emphasis on the T, I don't know where that's disappeared to, it'll be there somewhere, you come on to anti-racism in the BANEs, of course though, um, you know we got all this BS, yeah. The Tale of the Glasgow Girls, the Anti-Racist Subcommittee, the BAME Network, the BAMES, <laughs> Anti-Racist -edu uh, Education, Holocaust Memorial Day, Anti-Muslim Prejudice, New Anti-Racist Educational Resources, which is what I was just on, uh, Holocaust Education, Learning from the Past, Teachers Turning the Tides, The Myths of Immigration, Showing Racism the Red Card, etc. Yeah, the list is endless. I mean, these people... They're just everywhere now. This ideology, this cancerous fucking ideology is creeping into every aspect of society across the pond, or the board even. So much so in Scotland though. You know, time after time we see headlines and articles from these people, these so-called anti-racist educators and or activists and or experts spouting the same nonsensical, intolerable BS. But it's presented as if it's factual. Started off using the word diversity every time I was to deliver a lecture, it would be around cultural diversity. And I wondered whether I did that because it was safe, it was comfortable to use the word diversity, um, but actually I have now started, um, I have a dislike to the word now, <laughs> and I think diversity is um, too flowery. Um, it's too soft and I think it doesn't actually get the message across and I think when institutions start to use terms like diversity are we in danger perhaps I don't know of um, losing the critical edge of issues around social justice and equality um, so Actually, when I, when I now deliver a lecture to the students um, uh, in my institution, I will actually um, not actually talk about diversity. I'll say I'm going to talk to you about uh, white privilege and whiteness theory. Um, but paint a pretty bleak picture when you say any Scottish city is decades behind cities like Manchester or Bristol in terms of attitudes to race. If somebody's quoted me out of context, I didn't actually say that. I said that any Scottish city was decades behind any English city in terms of how the mirror it held up to itself. So in, in, in Birmingham, for instance, having a black brummie is not unusual and a Birmingham person would think that. In, in London, the same. In Liverpool, the same. But in Scotland, in any Scottish city, although that we've got a large, diverse population here, if, if you say Glaswegian, the image that comes to your head isn't necessarily of a black Glaswegian. And so for people to catch up and realise that there are a lot of black people living in Scotland, that we do have a diverse population here, but we need to see that, that population reflected in the media, in, in all sorts of different ways. And the fact that Glasgow University is, as you say, leading the way on this issue, you know, you're the national poet isn't that all evidence that, that Scotland is changing? It's a great moment to be black and Scottish. Scotland is changing. But in order for our countries to change, we need to hold up a mirror to ourselves and to look at the ways in which we can change more. But I, I wanted to sort of really finish my remarks by saying this, my own experience, I suppose. I'm very confident that the future of Scotland will be a very non-racial 
and anti-racist country because we are grappling with rejecting an imperialist British viewpoint of what a nation is and what it can be. We're rejecting an ethnocentric definition of what that nation is. We're setting an example of civic nationalism and inclusion, which means that we have a, a national identity which is going to be different. It's not going to be what it is now. We're preparing a future where people can define a Scots person non-racially. But for that to be possible, the, the reality of the inequality economically in the labour market, you know, I look at my own council, we have 15% BME people in the city, but only have less than 3% in the workforce. That's 15%. BME in the workforce, but only 3% make up the council workforce. And that's the sort of rhetoric that you hear time after time from these individuals. And as I said, it doesn't matter if they're the educators, quote unquote, the experts, or activists. They peddle the same shit. Another one here, of course, is Michelle Campbell. I'm not entirely sure if she's any relation to the dickhead I just played, but they have the same second name. Rather fitting in a Scottish context, nonetheless. And she was uh, whining about unconscious bias and goes on to talk about. A mixed-race councillor shed tears as she slammed colleagues for their unconscious bias in an emotional speech calling for better education around racism in schools. <laughs> Going on to say that she'd put forward a motion at a virtual Renfrewshire Council meeting on Thursday asking members to call on Chief Executive Sandra Blank and Director of Children's Services Stephen Quinn to work with the Rainbow Unicorn Government and other bodies such as Education uh, Scotland to ensure more anti-racism teaching resources are included in the syllabus. The motion called for more education on British colonies as well as the country's regrettable but significant part in a slave trade because we need to know about it because the Bains want you to know. Then she says down here, of course, that um, <clears throat> uh, I will not sit by, uh, sorry, I will not sit by in this chamber and be lectured by any of my colleagues when I am the only person of colour in this chamber, which is not reflective of our communities, which is fucking hilarious, by the way, because at the end of this video here, there she is there, Michelle Campbell, she's from uh, Renfrewshire, or an, an area of Renfrewshire represents it council-wise, and it was like 0.4% BAME. <laughs> that said, it's this talk of representation all the fucking time. 15% of the council workforce, no, the work, uh, the overall workforce, sorry, is BAME. There needs to be 50% of the council, needs to be 50% of the police, needs to be 15% of the supermarkets, etc. And it's a slippery slope because as their population increases, so too by their logic with the percentage and all of the aforementioned work areas and environments. Another quick example before I move on, because I am now on the verge of rambling, would be uh, Talut, Talat, sorry, Yacoub. <laughs> uh, the women have stood in Parliament and said that white women need to step aside. The women have cries about the lack of BAME representation. The women have demands that every political party shoehorns, forces BAMEs, especially BAME women, women's, into winnable seats. And of course, here she is here with her past the mic campaign, which is cancer. Giving women of colour and voice above the noise and she there she's there she's shaped for the occasion <laughs> i missed that moustache but she says here whilst the work remains superficial the problem will continue to stand those we read about and hear from across our media are and will continue to be disproportionately white and male in a majority white country but don't talk about it. it's just representation bollocks communities of color our minority in the Scottish population, but even a proportionate representation of this minority is, not, minority, sorry, is not visible on our screens or in our papers. So again, what she's referring to, of course, if we take the 2011 census, where Scotland was 96% white, there should be at least 4% BAMES, especially women, the Wamans, in every paper, in every TV channel. But then when the next census rolls around, and let's just say for argument's sake that it's 8% non-whites, then it would have to be 8% every paper, 8% in TV, and then the census after that, we could keep doing this until they're 80% of the population, then what? It has to stop. And what fundamentally has to stop right now in its fucking tracks is the assumption that because things aren't equal, in terms of what they claim is equal, in relation to a representation, doesn't mean it's racism, doesn't mean it's systemic institutional barriers, it's... Nothing to do with that at all. But of course it is if you listen to their shit. And that brings us full circle as we now go back to the anti-racist educator. A channel or a website even that I am very familiar with because I've made several videos on these pieces of shit. But you know, if we go to their glossary, as I've been over before, racist, race, racism, privilege, BAME, person of colour, political blackness, whiteness, white fragility, critical race theory, 
white supremacy, anti-Muslim racism, racial literature, prejudice, xenophobia, reverse racism, power, orientalism, tokenism, you know? And this is basically, as I said, one of the websites that you're directed to from the EIS, which is a teaching union, and this cancerous ideology is seeping ever, not surely, slowly but surely, into academia. How many times have I even made videos uh, pointing out of these so-called anti-racist experts slash teachers that are talking about teaching it to their, the children in their classrooms? So this website here, essentially, uh, based in Scotland, the Anti-Racist Educators, the collective of educational stakeholders, including students, teachers, parents, academics and activists, working toward building an education system that is equitable, free from racial justice, critically engaged with the issues of power, identity and privilege. It's easy to think that you're not racist by treating everyone equally, regardless of race. But educators need to consider what it means to be actively anti-racist, which is anti-fucking-white. Because all they talk about is whiteness, you know? But I'm just going to scroll down here where you get a gist of these cunts. Pardon my French. My name is Melina. I teach English in a secondary school. And I'm an avid anti-racist activist. I have a particular interest in academia, uh, academic research. I'm currently a member of the Reframing Race Program, run by the Runnymede Trust. I completed my MED dis uh, dissertation on anti-racism and Scottish educational policy. And I received a scholarship to visit the USA and explore racial dialogue and education. A lot of my anti-racist activism also stems from my involvement in the Scottish and British Trade Union. It's given me opportunities to engage with racial matters in education and society at white. Network with local communities. Speak at conferences and design and facilitate workshops on racism. Co-founder Hashim. He's a fucking primary teacher. His energy for anti-racist activism and research come from both his experiences of being Muslim from a Pakistani family, just as Scottish as I am, though, apparently, and seeing the structures of racism persist in wider society. He's a primary teacher, an early career primary teacher based in Glasgow. And here he is, part of an organization or a website or a group of people, whatever you want to call them, that have engulfed themselves in a toxic fucking ideology who are hell-bent on getting this to become the norm, who are hell-bent in infiltrating academia with their cancer, you know. Organizers, San Gita and Lewis Howe and Navan, you know, I could go on, uh, there's not that many others. Nagit Riaz, and who's Nagit Riaz? Oh, well, there's Nagit Riaz. Funding for garlic discriminates against Muslims. <laughs> yeah, that's Nagit Riaz. Somebody else that's also uh, rather popular, so to speak, upon this in and around this website, is of course Kajida Muhammad. Now who's Kajida Muhammad? The person I played at the beginning, he was talking about teaching whiteness theory and uh, white privilege to students. You know, so-called academic. Yeah. I was listening about this podcast earlier. I'm not going to play any of it, but she's on that, you know, the, the Muslim that goes every two seconds, but you hear where that oppression and domination and you know, then they talk about white privilege and whiteness and they talk about uh, the genocide of all of the um, indigenous folks of the world. They never talk about any other genocide that ever happened. No, no, because it's white man bad. That's all it is. It's white man bad. Never talk about Muslims. Oh, we can't do that. It's racism. Racism. <laughs> These people are fucking cancer. So that brings me to the anti-racist educational school resources, if the page would load. The apologies of a sound a bit out of it today. Um, I'm only doing this to distract myself because I feel fundamentally awful. <coughs> you know, going through some shit just now. So, funny way to kind of distract myself from things, but here we are. It needs to be done nonetheless. So, I've been through some of this before. You know, they've updated this bit, but I'm not going to read through it. You know, it's just cancer. There are anti-racist school resources, you know. Black Lives Matter. Anti-blackness. You know. <laughs> what can people do? Black Lives Matter 2020. It's really relevant in Scotland, you see. But this one here, this one really got me. Uh, what is it? The anti-racist educator white privilege tests. Wow, wow, wow. And here we have it here. Hmm. You got a pen handy? Maybe you can join in. Maybe you can see how privileged you are. Let's have some fun, shall we? We are often encouraged to believe that we live in a meritocracy. Yeah, well, we do, but, you know, let's pretend we don't because of the lack of the representations, you see. Where everyone is equal and treated the same. This test is meant to debunk that myth of a post-racial meritocracy by exposing some of the structural racial inequalities that exist in the UK. This is from the anti-racist educator, by the way, who's made up of teachers, academics, primary school and high school teachers, academics, activists, parents, questionable, debatable, 
Students, questionable, debatable. Nonetheless, it's an ideology. It doesn't matter if there's two people that make up that website. This is an ideology that they all share. This is an ideology that is seeping into not just Scottish academia, British academia, I'd say a European academia, and of course it all comes from American academia. You know, they've taken all this bollocks about critical race theory, etc., and they've copied and pasted it into Scotland. So anyway... <coughs> Uh, <clears throat> by exposing some of the structural racial inequalities that exist in the UK. Adapted from Peggy McIntosh's White Privilege and Parking the Invisible Knapsack, this exercise helps both white people and people of colour explore the presence of white privilege in British society. Racism is like a coin with two sides. On one side it disadvantages some people, we tend to focus on this, and on the other side it benefits some people, which is easier to forget, white privilege. We encourage participants to consider white privilege as a result of structural Racial inequalities rather than just laziness. Ill intentions are inherent qualities of a particular group. <laughs> so, if you really want to take part in this, be my guest. For each statement, if you believe it is often true, you score zero. If the statement is sometimes true, you'll score three. And if the statement is false, you will score five. At the end, you'll be asked to add up your score. So, number one is people often assume I'm an immigrant before I even say words. Oh, well, this is definitely white privilege. And I'm sick of these people saying shit like this. It was only a couple of days ago that I posted something on my Telegram. Finally enough, one of the people that I played at the beginning of the video in those videos, for the woman that was talking about a black brownie, but you know, it's a bit different when it's like a glass region because everyone thinks they're white. She was talking about experiences of racism. The racism, of course, and she was saying that people always ask her where she comes from, despite this being her country, quote unquote, you know. And it pisses me off because Scotland has always been white. It's always been white. And even now, if we go by the last census, 96% white. So, granted, naturally the assumption would be that if somebody who is not white wanders around the streets, people will assume that they're not from here. It's always been that way. In my opinion, it should still be that fucking way. But, <laughs> these people assume that because people question where they're from, it's racism. So they want to teach children this. It's, it's nothing to do with what I just said. No, it's white privilege. Because you get to walk around without people questioning where you're from. But isn't it funny though, because if a Polish person or a Romanian person walked on the street and they spoke, you know, then immediately people would say, oh, where are you from, mate? They're not gonna assume they're Scottish because they don't sound Scottish. <laughs> no. The question, where are you from, is a hard one to answer, especially if the person asking is trying to figure out why I look the way I do. Again, no, Scottish people are white. So the assumption would be that if you're not white, you're not Scottish. It's not privilege. When I walk into any British supermarket, I rarely find plenty of food products sorry, that meet my family's traditions because you live in Scotland. You live in Scotland. This is what they're doing. They're just, at every fucking turn, they're trying so hard to imply that everything to do with our country's racist because we're not being considerate to their fucking traditions. If you want your family's traditions, hook, line, and sinker, a plate full them, fuck off home. Fuck off home. It just really irritates me. It really gets on my fucking nerves, man. I have to listen to this whining. It's hard to find the right hair products that work for my hair. Wow, well, you know, fucking deadams. It's hard to make find makeup, tights, and or plasters that match my skin tone. White privilege, folks. <laughs> when I walk into a shop, the security guard is likely to keep a closer eye on me because of the colour of my skin. How do you know it's because of the colour of your skin? <coughs> And it really annoys me. When I was a teenager, if you're from England, you'll know what I'm talking about when I say the word chav. If you're from Scotland, you know what I'm talking about when I say the word ned. I was a ned, you know? I had all the Fred Perry truck suits. Didn't have the Burberry cops, mind you, but I had all the Fred Perry truck suits. I had the white socks tucked into said truck suits, uh, truck suit bottoms. You know, I was just a wee dick. I had the gelled hair, I had the fucking earrings, and all the rest of it. And I used to get followed around by security guards. I used to get old people crossing the road when they see me walking towards them, especially if I was with other people, because they seen what was coming towards them was a net. Now, if I was properly dressed, that probably wouldn't have happened. Finally, it doesn't really happen to me now because I don't dress like a dickhead anymore. But the point remains the same. I knew myself that I had something to do with the fact that some neds were violent and some neds were thieves and criminals, etc. And that is why guards would follow them about, and that is why people would be a bit unnerved to be in their presence. Now, <laughs> black people, of course, if you dress 
like a gangster, if you dress like a wannabe thug, you know, you're going to have guards following you about. Now, if a black person walked into the shop and he was fairly presentable, I highly doubt a guard would follow him about. But this is the cliche shit they do all the time. Every single one of them always say the same thing, that they're followed about relentlessly no matter where they go in a shop by a guard. The same way that feminists always say that they can't walk down the road from A to B without being wolf whistled every two minutes. It's cliche, it's buzzwords, and above all else it's nonsense. But the irony of it is for these people that talk about thinking critically, none of them fucking do. They never think of the reasons as to why this might be happening to them. They never take a look at themselves. They never took a look at the group that they associate with. In my case, it would be Neds. In their case, it would be wannabe thugs and whatnot. Nah, it's racism. When I'm passing through security and immigration in an airport, I'm often randomly stopped and asked more questions compared to other people of a different skin colour. Well, if you happen to be a Muslim, that's understandable, is it fucking not? Uh, if I'm ever stopped by the police, I would feel that it's likely they singled me out because of my skin colour. But how do you know that that's the case? Again, this is this inferiority complex nonsense. It does not mean that white privilege exists. It does not mean that the police officers in question are racist in any shape or form. They might have stopped you for a plethora of reasons, but to automatically assume that you've been singled out because of your skin colour is nobody else's problem but your own. Whenever there was a terrorist attack, people tend to look at me in a more fearful, hateful and or accusing way. Well, again, if you're a Muslim, that's not really my problem. Uh, the book I read at school really have characters that share the same colour as me because you live in Scotland. You live in fucking Scotland! In the movies I watch, the characters who share the same colour as me are rarely the heroes. Oh, fucking God. Oh, I wonder what it's like in Bollywood. Are all the fucking movie stars, the heroes, etc. Are they white? No, they're not. Uh, in the history I have studied, my ancestors are not given much attention or credit because there is no history to talk about really in relation to brown and blacks in Scotland. But, you know... <laughs> In the news, the people who share the same colour of skin with me are often portrayed as poor, helpless and or dangerous. That's just nonsense. Nonsense. From nursery to this day, the teachers I had, I have, sorry, said, uh, I have had don't share the same colour of skin. From nursery to this day, the teachers I have had don't share the same colour of skin as me. And how is that anything to do with white privilege? Again, you live in Scotland. You live in Scotland, but this goes back to this representation bullshit. <laughs> The only artists in school who share the same colour of skin as me are cleaning and or catering stuff. Oh my god, just white privilege, that's what it is, yeah. I sometimes wish that my skin and or hair was lighter because it would make me my life easier. Festivals and holidays my family celebrate are not usually celebrated in schools. It's difficult to find posters, postcards, picture books, green cards, etc. Featuring people who have the same colour of skin as me. Because you live in Scotland! Fucking hell! So it really gets to my nerves about these individuals, it really does. I mean, you might think I'm wasting my time reading for this shit, but like, what I'm saying is that these people, they have a shared collective ideology that they are trying to infiltrate academia as we speak, and day by day they are doing so, slowly but surely. And they are eventually going to be able to tamper with Scottish children's minds. And that's why I can't stand them. I fucking detest these people. They're cancerous, they're dangerous, they're poisonous. People online or in public have directed racial slurs at me. And what do you think white people feel when all they ever hear about constantly on a daily basis from these people uh, is white privilege and whiteness theory and oppression and uh, structural racism and white privilege, etc. I feel like a lot of that at this point. I mean, I'm constantly under the microscope by these wankers that have gone to university and think they know what the fuck they're talking about. I cannot criticise our government, history and our culture. Why would you criticise my history? You know? <laughs> Well, it was our history, why did you criticise it, but you know. Uh, our culture, and talk about how much I disagree with policies and practices without being seen as an outsider. Oh, I know the feeling in that one, eh? Because I can't criticise any government policy without feeling like an outsider. Blood and soil and all that. It's difficult to find. It's difficult for me to find many spaces where I can be the, in the company of people who share the same colour of skin as me. And how the fuck's that anybody's fault by your parents for dropping you off as a sprog in this country? <laughs> what do they expect? <sighs> when I am told about national heritage, about human history, or about civilization, I'm shown people who do not share the same culture as skin as color as me. I mean, what the? F oh my God! If I ever, uh, if ever I swear on on behave badly, people att tend to attribute these behaviors to the bad morals and the poverty of people who share my skin color and cultural background. Whenever I do well in challenging situations, people may call me a credit to my race. I'm often asked to speak for all the people of my racial, cultural, and/or religious group. Whenever I ask to speak to the person in charge, I can be sure that I will be facing someone who does not have the same colour of skin as me. 
I mean, this is ridiculous. The way that these these people, whoever's written this, but it's it's no different to anything else I've read. They constantly do this. They talk about, oh, I'm the only person, well, person of color here. I'm the only babe. It was white. Constantly complaining. We're all one. That's what we're told. It shouldn't bother them. But yet, from day dot, even with shit like this, if this, for example, was presented to a class for them all to fill out and there happened to be some brown and black kids in that class, that's going to create a divide right then and then. Because not only are you then making the black and brown kids feel that they're underprivileged and they're under uh, appreciated and all the rest of it, you're also putting it into the white kids' heads that they're privileged. And the examples that you're giving to, pro to pro proclaim or prove that they're privileged are just nonsensical. There's no logic behind any of this shit at all. I mean, that's ridiculous. If I asked to speak to the person in charge, oh, they don't look like me. So fucking what? You're in Scotland. Fucking. <laughs> that's just can't. This it, it's just cancer, eh? It's fucking cancer. This whole ideology is it's petulant, it's childish, it's retarded, and it's cancer. If I go home from most meetings or organizations, wait, sorry, it's difficult for me to ignore and or minimize the impact of racism. I'm like, what are you talking about? What, because nobody's brown around you? Dry your fucking eyes or fuck off home. Oh. If I go home from most, uh, go, from most meetings or organizations and or clubs that, attend, that I attend feeling somewhat isolated or out of place or outnumbered, unheard, feared or hated rather than tied in and welcome. Oh, just, that's inferiority complex, not a problem. If my day or week is going badly, I can I can't help but wonder if the negative episodes or situations had racial overtones. I mean, this is ridiculous. I am unable to discuss my racialized experiences openly and honestly at school or at work because they're ridiculous. They're fucking ridiculous. One hundred percent is the score of those who benefit most from white privilege. Zero percent is the score of those who experience the least white privilege. What does that mean about our different life experiences and opportunities in the UK? We encourage you to get someone uh, of a different racial identity to complete this test, complete results, and discuss any insights gained from the process. <laughs> the score focuses only on race, and it is worth noting that other intersectional identities, gender, sexuality, class, disability, etc., will affect your experience of privilege. <laughs> it's just, this is cancer. It's fucking cancer. Moreover, race is a social construct that is fluid and constantly evolving. Race is a social construct. So a person's score may be subject to change over time, depending on the context and their racial awareness. <laughs> it's just cancer. <laughs>